So welcome to AP Human Geography Review for Unit 2. So Unit 2 is essentially about population and how it affects countries and the world and it's just like a main issue or subject in AP Human. So population can increase and decrease and you kind of wonder what does it affect, what does it do to these countries. So most of the population in the world lives in less developed countries, which you wouldn't think that would be true because they're poor, but it is. So less developed countries, I also have the fastest growing populations because because of families and adults and children and the adults want more children to help. Them. Like most of the time, most adults want children to help out in growing stuff and crops and helping out working in the fields, stuff like that, to support their family. And in other places, it's just for their culture, and they just want more children, or they just keep trying for that son, and gender inequalities and stuff like that. So demography is the study of population characteristics. So population increases and decreases and this is infected affected excuse me by environment technology and sicknesses so environment like population could be increased in areas where there is more water and easier water access for shipping goods and for drinking water and it's decreased in other areas such as deserts where there isn't as much water or access to anything at all and maybe rainforests where you can't really do much there and in technology this increases population in big cities because it's just right in the big cities and there's doctors and medic medics and medical help and things like that for people and sicknesses decrease the population, such as the plagues and things like that in the world. And increase in population can also lead to overpopulation, where people run out of food and fertile land and stuff like that to help them in living their life. So, population parameters such as infant mortality rate, which is the percent of children who pass away before their first birthday, and life expectancy is the average length of someone's life in a country, and total fertility rate, which is um, the average number of children born to a woman in her childbearing years, and all these affect countries and that's how you tell their population increases and decreases. Life expectancy is low and more populated, well, in the poorer countries, of course, and total fertility rate and infant mortality rates are usually high because people want more children and because they don't have the technology, children don't last as long such as in infant mortality rates. So, moving on. Um, more population parameter parameters. Um, crude birth rate, which is the number of live births per 1,000 people. And crude death rate, which is the number of deaths per 1,000 people. And that also affects countries and, you know, looking at their statuses and seeing their population and their demography, um, the demography characteristics, excuse me, and natural increase rate, which is the difference between the two of them, the crude birth rate and the crude death rate, and this kind of shows, you know, how countries increasing, and of course again with their populations. Um, natural increase rate is the difference between CDR and CBR, right, and so. This affects economics and children and their education and their gender, of course, and culture. So, edu economics, excuse me, 
such as healthcare, employment, nutrition, decreases fertility rates and growth rates, and education lowers fertility rates because people want less children, so it's easier to send them to school and get their education. And it also affects gender because people just keep trying for that boy and just gender inequalities. Um, this also plays a role in culture where they want more sons or they want more kids just to help them out um, and just help them out with their families and such as like the one child policy in China because they're reaching overpopulation where they just can't hold any more people. Um, and moving on to migration. Migration is long-term movement of a person from one political jurisdiction to another. So people can either emigrate or immigrate. So when people immigrate, they are moving into a place. And when people emigrate, like E for exit, they leave the place. Um, and they always have a purpose, like people leave or move into a country for purposes such as political issues. People might emigrate because their country is in a terrible position right now and they want religious freedom maybe. Um, maybe economic issues, they cannot find a job in their country or, you know, their job forces them to move. Um, Environmental issues, people have to move because their land is not fertile where they live and they can't support their family. Um, and some people move with other family, such as chain migration, they hear from other family that it's better in another country. So they move with them. Um, it can also be force, which they choose no choice but to leave because of the position they're in, maybe or they're told to leave, or voluntary, where they want to leave because, you know, they want a better life, maybe, or maybe they think another country suits them better. There are also push and pull factors, like push factors to pull them out of their, push them out of their country, of course, such as wars or plagues, anything that can harm them, and pull factors will pull people into other countries, such as, you know, fertile lands and water, and easier access to things, just what would make their lives easier. Moving on to Thomas Malthus, and he was a um, demographer, and he studied population characteristics, and he stated two things, that people need food to survive, and they have a natural desire to reproduce. And this leads to the thought that population would outgrow people's ability to reproduce food so people wouldn't you know there's just too much overpopulation they wouldn't have enough food to supply everyone of course and people would start to die and be terrible yes um moving on to migrants and refugees well the difference between them is refugees are forced from their homes and they cannot return because of fear Maybe fear of persecution or just fear in general. Maybe they just can't go back to their homes because it's covered in water, maybe. Just can't go back. And migrants aren't forced out. They just choose to leave. And they can return if they please, but it's not likely because they move for better lives. So, yeah, that's the difference between that. And that's just kind of a broad subject right there. Um, then there are demographic transition models, and there are four phases, and the first phase, there is low population, and, you know, high birth rates and high death rates, because, you know, they aren't starting off very well, and they just can't supply themselves, and, yeah. And then in stage two, as you can see, that the birth rate stays roughly the same people keep having children and the population grows a little bit and the death rates start to decrease because you know 
they've had advances in medical technology and they're able to, you know, help their country. And in stage three, population increases more. And you can see that, like, the birth rate decreases. So people are just starting to get educated and learning that you don't need as many children and that it's okay. And death rates also decrease more. And... Yeah, and then stage four, you can see that the population increases a lot and that birth rates and death rates are pretty constant now. People are very well educated. They understand that you don't need a whole bunch of children and the population is steady and everything's going good. And stage five is just theoretical because no country has made it there yet, but as you can see, the population kind of stays the same, it kind of starts to decline there a little bit, and the birth rates and death rates go up, but this is just according to scientists, and no one knows exactly for sure because it's not happening right now. Um, then some terms to remember are population density, which is the number of people in a given unit of area, that's also called arithmetic density, just it's easy to remember because arithmetic looks like some math term and just numbers and physiologic density it compares cropland and human population in less developed countries just showing that less developed countries may um, have more people and less land and just comparing that and showing stuff well, that's the end of our review right there on Unit 2, and I hope it helps.